evening everybody today we are going to be making something so lovely I know you are all going to want to see what I'm doing now I've been asked so much about these beautiful hydrostone jars for my candles that I've been making but I'm going to tell you there's so many other things that you could actually do with them uh, you can make trinket dishes as well of course you can make you know the beautiful jars that I've been making you can even put you know like a fake plant or something like that inside and they will look absolutely beautiful but let's get going with this and I'll show you what I've actually done and then we're going to show you exactly how I've done it I'll give you all the measurements uh, so that there is absolutely no wastage at all so now before we get started I will actually show you so these are the jars here that we're going to be doing these are gorgeous pink one of them I have already sealed and the other one I have not so let's put the camera down and I'm going to show you nice and close so you can see exactly what it looks like and then we will get going with all of the measurements so now before we actually make anything I just wanted to show you a little bit so this one here has already had its sealing so with the sealing there's so many different sealants that you can actually use on the market I choose to use a water-based one that is a really good one um, called carsmonite seal uh, and that can do like things like jasmineite carsmonite um, of course hydrostone and things like that because it is a water-based uh, kind of look so sorry I had to just uh, get rid of some messages on my phone so this is like I said the sealed one so I've sealed inside as well and then this is the one that is not sealed so let's hold them together and can you see how this one looks a little bit more matte now some people do not seal the outside if they want it to look like a real stone without a sort of a glossy look but you definitely need to seal the inside uh, look honestly I would seal both now the reason I'm saying to seal both uh, is can you imagine if somebody spilt something or you know they knock something against it it would have a big stain on it because it's just going to go straight in um, you know to the raw material but if you do even like just even one glaze over the outside so it's not super shiny if you don't want super shiny and you can get a matte version even though the matte version is still going to give a little bit of a this sort of silky kind of look it's going to give like a satin type finish um, and you know look I've seen lots of people using all different things so anyway let's get making so now we are going to get ready to make it but I thought I would show you this is the hydrostone that I actually use I buy it in this massive big bag I actually buy it from a company called Barnes I will add all of the descriptions and everything down below so and inside let me show you what it looks like inside so that's basically what it looks like so let's get making so now we are going to be making them but before we start these are the molds that I am using I actually got these ones from Lee molds and then basically once you undo them we're just going to pull the side down but we basically pour the product inside that and then this cuff here this is like just a hard sort of um, plastic cuff it goes over the top and what it's actually doing is holding everything in place now you can put a peg on this to hold it but I don't I just sort of sit it over the top um, and I will show you as we go along you do need to tap it to get the air bubbles out uh, and so on so and they're nice and squishy this is kind of the silicon you want you don't want the silicon that's too hard because I've got a couple that are more made for resin and they're much harder than this silicon and what actually happens is a lot of air bubbles get trapped in it but these are perfect they don't get air bubbles trapped in as you can even see with this one here that we made there's no air bubbles it looks it looks perfect and then afterwards there is a, a few different steps to making it so the first step is obviously pouring it in here the second step is we're going to remove it from the mold the third step is we definitely need uh people are ringing me all night I swear um, anyway the third step um, is we're going to give it a water bath and sand it and the fourth step is drying it fifth step is going to seal it so there are a number of steps but once you get fast you will love it uh, now the beautiful Lee molds who I get these from they are actually making me a custom made one I will do a video later on but at the moment I don't have that in my hot little hands so we are just like I said going to be doing these ones for now so in front of me here so we'll move these aside there's a few things we need uh, 
so now I do have my scale it's really important to measure this if you don't measure it you will regret it uh, so I promise you you need to um, do this and a few people are telling me that their hydrostone is much thicker than mine now the thing is you need to follow these instructions super duper well and um, if you follow them it should be just the same consistency as mine as long as you're using the same um, you know product and I will pop that you know exactly where I get it from what it is and so on I will put that in the description so that you can see so now to do this we do need to use demineralized water um, or distilled water uh, don't use tap water because it can actually leave orange spots um, on it and that's just to do with your water you know waters um, have additives in them now they're not just basically out of a river so um, yeah that's why we've got to use a pure water now for this recipe these ones will actually fill two of these exact and you'll have no rubbish left over you'll have nothing left over it will fill them perfect so in here we're going to add 150 grams um, of water so we'll measure this up put the water in first because it does actually help um, if you put the water in first it basically is going to help absorb uh, the powder you know product so that that's my suggestion so it's 150 exactly so let me pop the lid on here uh, and now I'm going to add the um, like I said the hydrostone powder in here and you know this is one part water three parts hydrostone so like I said we've added 150 grams in here um, of water so we are going to add 450 grams of the powder so let me just tear this out and let me organize the powder now to make things easy I have popped it in this little container that you can see just to the side so I've torn out my scale we've got the water remember in here so you can just see the water I'm using an old yogurt container and this is what I do I basically just keep all these old containers I wash them out really well with soap and water and that way you don't need to buy any new containers uh, so you know and once you get sick of this container or you ruin it doesn't matter does it because it was just something and we're recycling that's what it's all about so as I said 450 so I'm literally just um, adding it into the water there's nothing exciting about what I'm doing but like I said you know you do need it right so that is it in there and now let's just take it off here we'll take it off the scale move that aside and basically I'm just going to slowly mix it in if you can just see like I'm just literally mixing this around and I know you can't see too much because I'm mixing it but if you can kind of see so it looks glubby at the start and you'll feel like it's sticking together but just slowly keep going round now you can use a stick you can use so many other things I choose to use just um, you know like a spatula because you can actually get right around the outside uh, you don't want to have any of this powder left behind so squish it along the sides and make sure it's super duper smooth because if it's not um, it will leave big lumps in it it won't be beautiful and also with this you can't just leave it on the bench for half an hour once you've mixed it you need to add your colors in you need to add anything else in and then you need to keep going so it's not something that you can make and just leave it on the bench it will start to go hard within a few minutes so if you can see this is totally mixed in and this is the consistency you know it's it's quite fluid so um, but if you add acrylic paint in it acrylic paint will thicken it up super fast I don't suggest you use acrylic paint to if you're going to um, dye the whole thing you can do swirls or marbling with acrylic paint now I'm actually using this little product here so um, I get these from a lady on Etsy I will actually pop in her um, description this is actually dye that you can use for um, uh, what is it um, oh gosh I can't think of what the other product is but you know what I mean there's another product similar to this but anyway you can use this you can also use pigments so it's basically just a squirty bit so you just give it a little squirt and it's just going to look like that just a tiny bit and then mix it super well um, 
you know and you don't need that much you've seen the little squirt that i did it's not a few drops it i've i've given it a few squirts because you have to remember that even though this is going to be a darker pink than what we want it's going to dry much much lighter so um, it's really important that you do put the right amount so make it darker so you can see it's kind of this pinky color and then of course it's going to dry to this very light kind of a pastel pink um, which is the color I love now we're going to do terrazzo remember so in here let me put the lid on this because you all know I spill everything um, and we will keep mixing this in a minute once I put the terrazzo in so now we need our scale back so let's just pop this onto here um, and now I want to have 50 grams of the terrazzo chips that I've already made so let me grab those and I'll show you what they look like as well now inside my bucket here you can see these uh, chips now what these actually are these are actually paint chips but you can make your own with hydrostone as well but I'm not going to do that now I just got these little paint chips from Kmart you can get them from any discount store and all we're going to do is measure 50 grams um, in here so let me just pop it in and 50 grams is perfect for this amount because if you don't have enough, what's actually going to happen is it won't give the terrazzo look. They'll just kind of get lost in there. And if you have too much, then you're going to have sort of gaping holes um, in it. So you need the right amount. So we've done that. Let's pop this one to the side. I don't definitely don't want to spill it. So that's what it looks like inside. Take it back off my scale. So we just want to mix it in well. Make sure all of the chips are well combined and you know they, they are stuck on the edge of this which is fine doesn't really matter I mean um, and you know try to just kind of more like not you know don't do this like really vigorously stirring you just kind of want to stir it round and if you can see it looks like that and now let's put it in here so I can show you how to do it so that's literally all you do with the hydrostone now, before we put it in that, you'll be able to see mine is still very, very fluid. Uh, can you see how fluid that is? A lot of people tell me that theirs is not fluid. It definitely should be. If it's not, it means you're doing something wrong. And then literally all we're going to do is pour it straight into the top. It will float down to the side. Um, so, and we just want to fill it until it just hits the top. I will do this one and then we will shake it um, in here so um, there's nothing too um, hard about doing this and scrape it all in like I said this amount is exact for filling these tulip molds so these tulip molds will hold about 220 grams of wax I make mine to be 200 grams so I don't do the 220 um, I just make them 200 because I think that just seems a bit, you know, um, perfect. Now, if you have a look in there, there's nothing left. So that's perfect. Now, what we're going to do is you just literally want to tap the sides. So you want to give it a few little bounces. And that's why you don't want to overfill these as well because uh, you don't want it all squirting over the top and it will... Look, you can use these little vibrating machines that you can use. They're like dental vibrating machines. I've never used them. I find this to be quite easy. It's only, you know, honestly, 20 seconds of just doing this. And, um, and then we've literally got to leave it just sit here to dry. So we'll pop the tops on now. Uh, like I said, it's just going to, you know, keep that circular shape looking beautiful. Pop that one on there. And if you want, just give them a bit more tap. But you can see that they're smooth to the top. They're flush to the top. Um, and look, it will need probably about an hour. Uh, depends on your environment as well. Now, remember anything that we're making. 
you know, I always say this to people, it's very important to remember that your climate, your environment, whether it's damp, dry, um, you know, a tropical area, whatever, that really does, um, you know, affect the end result, whether it is making hydrostone. Because you remember hydrostone, we're adding water into this solution. So this solution, it, it's like concrete, where concrete needs to absorb water to get its strength. So that's why later on we're going to give this a water bath and I'll show you how to do it it's really really easy um and i usually do it in the sink inside but for this purpose we will just do it in a bowl in my studio to show you how to do it um but um you know super easy and but there is a cure time in between and um i've definitely noticed there's a lot more strength uh, when you're curing it and doing the water bath so anyway that's it for now so we're going to leave these I will come back in about an hour's time and we will check them and um, see how they're going now it is the next day everybody so I thought I would take you back to show me uh, I'm doing these of course so all we're going to do is just take off uh, the top piece so like I said this is like a hard if you can kind of see it's kind of like a hard acrylic uh, and then you can put the peg there but I don't bother so anyway we're going to leave those now to open these up it's pretty easy all you're going to do if you can just see how easy that is and I haven't touched these at all we're just literally going to pull open um, the top just to loosen them off um, and then this one now these are totally different silicon grades I think um, if I'm right I think they're all made with this one now but when I first bought these they had two different options one was a cheaper silicon and one was a more expensive um, but I you know I think they're all like this now but you know honestly they're really worth it I think they, these maybe are about $60 um, each I think it's around that and then it comes with that they will last you such a long time it is 100% worth the $60 I know a lot of you will be thinking well I, I can get them cheaper somewhere else but honestly the quality is not the same I've used several different silicons these ones are definitely the best I've ever used um, it's like I said from Lee Moulds in Australia I will leave all of the links now and so all you're going to do is just give this a little twist on the inside and then they come out now can you see how it does not look uh, very terrazzo you know in compared to the one we've already done it's because it needs to be sanded down and go in a water bath so I'm going to actually show you how to do it and then once you've done this just twist it back the right way and then I just sit that back in the mold I do wash them but I don't wash them after every single use you can do several goes um, without washing it I mean look you could not wash it for months but because of like the chemical reaction in the powders it's definitely worth washing them because you don't want to ruin them you want these to last for a couple years so um anyway and you can see the same with that one but if you have a look inside you'll be able to see just a slight terrazzo so now we have our bowl here now this bowl has got just normal water in it uh you can use distilled water i've just got boiled water in here um you know it depends on what you want so anyway all we're going to do is literally sit this in here you want the water to be around and as i did say earlier the water will actually strengthen this product so that's all you want look honestly this is going to take you a few seconds i have my water slightly warm but you don't you can just have cold water it doesn't matter i don't have it hot though and all you're going to do is in circular motions kind of go around and you will slowly see the terrazzo coming to the surface I'm actually using a 1200 grit if you can see that on there it says 1200 grit sandpaper um, this is also a water sandpaper it's not a normal one um, so you know you'll be able to see water but you can use normal one if you really want to uh, if you can't get the water ones they're honestly like a dollar ten a massive sheet and it will last you ages uh, so that's what I actually do and do remember when it's wet it's going to be a different color to when it dries so after I do all of this and you can see this really is not taking as long like we're nearly finished now can you see already the um, terrazzo is coming to the surface or the terrazzo kind of look um, so that's why you're just doing this I don't do the inside because I'm just going to be putting candle wax in that there is no need you can do the top if you want but you don't need to and then of course just go around the outside because this is the bit that will have the 
bit this might be a bit sharp so you definitely want to go around this just to neaten it off some people put little um silicon uh, kind of feet on these so they don't scratch anyone's surface at home I personally don't do that to these ones but I'm thinking when I have my new custom made uh, molds I am going to do that because they are kind of going to be a little bit um, you know a little bit kind of more luxury uh, sort of end as the well at the moment so I'm sort of working on a few different things at the moment um, I may do a blend of a couple waxes uh, I don't know I have a lot of people hearing a lot of people talking about that doing a few blends so I might actually um, do that but anyway we will see so now all we're going to do now this is finished so all I do is I literally just go and just sit this on the bench I give it a bit of a shake there's not much water on it you can wipe it with a paper towel which I usually do and then I'm just going to simply place it um, on the bench so let me get some paper towel we will wipe that off and then we'll be on to the next one so you can see it's quite fast it doesn't take long at all so let's just take this out as I said just get your paper towel we're just going to wipe around the outside um, and then like I said so this is it now it's going to just sit on the rack and um, cure and you'll be able to see the difference between that to that so it's pink like this but it will turn out to be this light pink color once it cures so five days on the rack for this once it's been sitting there for five days then we will seal it so I do have another jar set aside and I'm going to show you in this video how I seal mine um, as well and look anything I teach everybody on here look I have to just say you know look you know there's probably people that do different methods to me and I don't want to say my methods are exact and everything I'm doing is perfect because somebody else may disagree but honestly this is just what works for me so I always say you know you just got to try and see what works for you I mean if you were in Queensland or you know a hot climate like I think Florida is quite warm you know your jars may not need to have the five days they might need three or four days to sit there and cure but you can't seal it if there's any wetness or anything at all because what will happen is it will actually bubble the sealant um, now there's a few different sealants on the market there's a couple that people get from overseas I have tried that um, a beautiful lovely lady from coconut coast uh, she actually sent me a sample for free of that so that I could try it out and see because she'd ordered some herself so I did try it um, the sealant she was using it was a great sealant I will actually leave the links down below the only thing is it's not in Australia we've got to order it overseas and it's hundreds of dollars for that sealant but that's not the reason why I'm not going to use it I actually didn't like the smell I thought it had a really strange smell but honestly it reminded me very very similar um, of a smell of sort of PVA but a really strong PVA glue uh, so I generally use um, a product called Carsmanite Sealer. So that's a sealer for like Jasmineite um, or Carsmanite, which is similar. And it works fantastic on these. I've also used Mod Podge and I've watered Mod Podge down. That's also really good. Um, but, you know, look, of course you've got to do your testing. Check out your insurance. See that everything... Um, you know works well and um, so on so uh, yeah so when my shop opens which it is I'm hoping I'm going to be setting the launch date or the um, grand opening date for the 1st of December uh, 2023 but of course I'm going to keep everyone posted uh, because I've had lots of people asking me about the opening date of my new store that's going to open as well um, so I'll let you know and then of course these will be there so everyone could have a look and see what they think so there you go we have dried these you can also use um, you know if you've got like a new dishcloth you know how you actually get them you could actually use that to dry them off or you could just leave them on a rack and air dry it doesn't matter I just do it so that the wetness is not all over my bench but like I said these are just going to sit on the rack um, you know usually I just leave them for a week and come back so now that we've done that, I'm going to clean up all of this and then I'm going to show you how I actually seal the second one because I've already got some that are totally dry. 
Now let's start on the ceiling. So here, this is just like a chox kind of, um, you know, cloth. Obviously it's a brand new one. Uh, so I'm just going to cut a little section. I always just cut a tiny bit because you don't need to use the whole thing. Um, and that way you're not going to waste anything as well. But you could rinse this out afterwards and just um, reuse it again next time. So all we're going to do is just have a little piece that big. And I know you might think, that's weird. Why are you going to be using this and not a brush? You can use a brush, but I generally use this and I'll show you why. So inside here, I've already used um, all of the product that um, that lovely lady from Coconut Coast sent me. But inside here, I actually have Carsmanite now, which is in here. And this is what it looks like. It's just white. See, it sort of looks a bit like PVA, doesn't it? And all I'm going to do is let me get the one that I haven't done. So this is the new one that we haven't done yet. So like I said, we're going to just sit this one aside. And all I do is fold this up just like that and then I dip it in here and wipe the excess off and this way you're not getting paint um, kind of like those paint streaks and then all I do is literally go over the outside just like this and can you see how smooth it is rather than having all the streaks I started doing it with a paintbrush then I thought look I need to come up with a new idea because that just isn't really working for me so this is literally how I do mine you could do several coats if you want but um, to me as long as it's kind of a little bit waterproof to protect it on the outside you know it's look you're never going to get perfection with this like this is handmade and this is what I tell everyone it's totally handmade so that's fine so and after I've done this because we've already done all of the sides. I just let this dry and then I'll turn it upside down and do the same thing. The inside, I do this twice. Um, you can use a brush if you want it thicker on the inside because obviously the inside is going to have the wax. So it definitely needs to be sealed. Um, and that's the inside of this one. And I do it twice. So, but you can see you know it's really not that hard a process so now I'm going to go inside I am going to make my candle I will bring it back to show you once I've actually made it and um, I'm sure you are going to love it so I hope you have loved just watching this whole process uh, but yeah that's it and then with this you can rinse that out and just let it dry and then you can use it next time um, but I wanted to show you my whole sort of process um, and hopefully that kind of makes it a little bit easier um, but anyway and this is a water-based sealant as well I definitely suggest you use a water-based sealant uh, but you do need to check that it's going to work with the heat and candles as well and that's what I said um, Carsmanite is is made for that so that's why I personally um, use it anyway we will go on to the next bit like I said making the candle now I have finally finished the candle everyone and I thought I would just show you. So this is what it looks like. Doesn't it look just divine? It does look so so pretty. So and this particular candle has held uh, 200 grams um, of the white wax that you can see here and then the flower on top is roughly about 22 to 25 uh, grams of wax. So uh, that means this is going to come to 225 grams in total and one thing that's super important if you're putting flowers like this on a candle obviously this is a wax one but you want to make sure that everything can melt down together so there's no good putting like a pillar one that you think is not going to burn properly it needs to be the same wax or very very uh, similar and I will do another video later on about this wax because I am now um, using two different waxes and um, combining them uh, to come up with a much much better solution in the end because I was having too much pull away from the sides and you can see here um, it's adhering quite well but we will see how it goes because it may pull away you never know I'm hoping not um, but anyway I will do a little video on that a little bit later so that we can um, do everything but I hope you have enjoyed this video like I said it's just giving you a bit of a snapshot isn't it about the things that you can do and I will bring a video later on about how to actually make this beautiful candle that you can see here make sure you give me a huge thumbs up if you love it um, and like I said I will see you on the next video bye friends